Shall we start? Yeah, like Rakesh told, we are live. You can start. Okay, okay. So, hello everyone. My name is Amandeep. I work at Tech Table. Today we have arranged another webinar, and the topic is discovering deep learning. It is very difficult for for many of us to differentiate among deep learning, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. To get the to get the answers and to get the clarity on many other doubts, we have invited today Mr. Ayon Roy. who is a who is a student of computer science and he has an internship on data science ai and currently is a data science intern at lulu international exchange uae we also have with us our founder mr rakesh roshan so ayon shall we start yeah yeah so thank you thank you for the introduction and i welcome all the people who are currently watching this live stream Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to start learning or to explore this domain so uh, my topic today would be discovering deep learning in this topic i would be focusing more into how deep learning is progressing in the market or what things actually we have to learn or what things we have to keep in mind while we start with deep learning and the small small concepts and the libraries that we generally use in the society or in the industry i would be discussing about that thing in this talk i hope that you will love it uh, like as amanpreet uh, already introduced me i am a third year student of bachelor's of technology in computer science engineering and i have worked as data science interns at various organizations and i brought kaggle this meetup community in india for the first time that's a uh, like introduction quite quite short introduction about me so what we would be discussing today right because if we have come here if we are devoting a a little bit amount of time of a daily life so what we would be discussing here is first of all we would be just uh, explaining or just uh, like exploring the ai ml deep learning in simple words what actually these domains are like maybe you feel ai is very different or ml is very different or deep learning is very different and you have to take a hell lot different of a hell lot of different approaches to start with these things it's not like we will uh, focus on to those things into simpler words i have kept this as much simple as possible then we would be diving into the details of what actually deep learning is what's the definition and what things actually go into deep learning and then we would be discussing the industry use cases or where deep learning is used in the industry so that you get an idea about what you are learning and what the industry actually requires or where industry actually uses deep learning so you may get a new, like idea from there and then we would be discussing the key components of deep learning right if you are doing deep learning you have to keep certain things in mind maybe it's the very basic things or like how things actually work in deep learning the actual functioning of deep learning or what things you have to keep in mind if you are trying to do a project or trying to dive into deep learning we would be discussing those stuffs and after that we would be focusing into the deep learning libraries that are actually used uh, like vibrantly in the industry if you go to any ai or machine learning based startups you will you will see that organizations are working into these domains with the help of these libraries so we would be discussing that and why deep learning is growing right if we are focusing on learning new stuffs there should be something in return and if we are learning something it should be a asset for us in the coming future so we would be focusing into why deep learning is actually growing and why industry is so much uh, after uh, like deep learning and why they want to adapt these things if you then we would be discussing the challenges the industry faces like what what are the major challenges that one team or that a data scientist or person working in deep learning have to face while working with it so we would be focusing into that and up at the last we would be just uh, discussing about the resources where you can go and learn deep learning so that you can get started after the session is over or like as soon as you start you as soon as you want to start your career in deep learning or want to start with this this was a rough agenda so yeah let's get started and uh, before we move ahead i would request all of you to take a pen and paper so that in case you want to take any notes in case you want to take a short note which you can refer even after the session is over 
you can take them and if you have any doubts definitely you can note down too at the end of the session i will try to answer them also so yeah this is a uh, like very simple version of the definition of these ai ml deep learning uh, we would be understanding this in a graphical format too but as of now we are trying to make it as simple as possible artificial intelligence is just a method by which human like we humans have intelligence right we the major asset that we have as a human is our intelligence we try to replicate like we try to exhibit that type of intelligence through a machine or like by machines 100% is not possible but yes we are trying to make it better and better so artificial intelligence is just a way we try to exhibit those human intelligence and machine learning is a way to approach or like way to achieve ai like if you want to uh, exhibit the human intelligence you have to make your machines learn right if you if your machines have to work or have to exhibit intelligence like a human they have to be trained like a human so machine learning is an approach to achieve artificial intelligence and what's deep learning then deep learning is a technique of implementing machine learning right if you want to exhibit those intelligence you have to train your machines and if you have to train your machines deep learning is just a method to help you in training those machines so that those machines become better and better at a given point of time this is this is in a very simple words we would be going into the graphical sections too if we focus into these things as we discussed ai is the bigger picture we use machine learning to achieve ai then deep learning is a technique to implement machine learning and when we go into the key components of deep learning we would be discussing about these neural networks the core of this deep learning and related stuff so we would be discussing neural networks in a detailed manner while we go into the key components of deep learning in this session uh, if we go by the words of nvidia Uh, like nvidia is a big uh, organization you might have heard about in gpus and in gaming things processors like they have scaled their business to a bigger scale like bigger level so what they think is ai like the easiest way to think they think of ai a machine learning and deep learning is they are concentric circles i ai's idea comes first then the like which is the largest as we saw in the previous slide like ai was the biggest circle then machine learning comes into it which blossomed later and finally deep learning right deep learning is powering the power, like powering machine learning as we discussed it's a technique of making machines learn better and faster in an efficient manner so if you want you can read the blog of what nvidia have to say on this difference the slides will be shared definitely with you no worries you can just go and read about these differences in terms of nvidia's like what nvidia thinks about this you can go to this blog and read about it so yeah we get a brief idea about ai machine learning deep learning i am again just giving you a brief overview that ai is the biggest circle and machine learning is helping to help like is helping us to achieve ai maybe ai cannot 100% replace humans but yes it will definitely help the human community to grow and deep learning is again a technique to help us implement those machine learning things and the things keep going on so we have discussed so much uh, like this much things till now and we would be now focusing our discussion completely on deep learning and things how things actually work in deep learning so yeah let's dive um deep learning is like if you see if you go into industry if you have researched about jobs or if you have researched about internships you might have seen that all of them are asking for neural networks or you might have heard about these short forms cnns rnns like these this terminologies so it's just because it's one of the fastest growing part of the ai community that you see whenever a whenever a organization starts its journey with ai or starts its journey into these booming fields it takes in, takes into care deep learning definitely and that's why you also see requirement of deep learning skills booming in the industry so how deep learning actually works it's like uh, we as discussed the artificial intelligence is mimicking of human brain at the level best right 100% definitely i'm again repeating 100% may not be possible but we are trying to replicate those things and as we know in our human brain we have a network of neurons and we take our decisions through the combination of the decisions by those neurons we have the neurons working in our brain and whenever we have to take a decision we the neurons get triggered and we 
reach to a final decision right we have the network of neurons in our brain similarly we try to use a concept of layered neurons layered layered neural networks neural networks means a network of neurons right in our brain we have neurons we make a network of those things and layers is we have different steps we have different level of filterings in the neural neurons that we are trying to use in order to achieve to a like in order to reach to a decision of uh, right to help the machines learn and to mimic human intelligence so it's like this is the simple definition of deep learning and a better view like what would be the better view of machine learning and deep learning right we are we discussed deep learning is just a technique to help you with machine learning stuff more complex stuff but a clarity is still required you may require a better better clarity about what ml dl like a, a different uh, a slight difference in between them we have to discuss that too i would try to cover that in this slide so if you go into the machine learning algorithms machine learning algorithms perform awesomely well if you are looking into rule based programs right if you if you go into a chatbot you may see that uh, like mm -hmm. these are the things Uh, like they they have predefined things if you want to do booking here is the thing if you want to do this like there like specific things booking cancellations or query something like that but because that's rule based if you click bookings it will take redirect you to a booking page or if you click on cancellations it will redirect you to a cancellation page those are rule based things but when it comes to real world right like you want to talk to a person like you want to talk to a customer executive because you want to share your problem and you want to share your concern with them and you want to respond maybe the bots or the the nlp based algorithms like the rule based algorithms may not function that well and may not help you in that that like in that much efficiency so this this is where classical ml algorithms fail a bit right they they are very good at rule based but when it comes to an open ended conversation when it comes to playing with image data when it play, when it comes to like the case of if you consider like unstructured text unstructured unstructured text means you are texting right like once you text to your friend hey how are you like this are rule based hey the bot also replies with hey but after that you write something which is not in the rule based like the machine cannot figure it out figure out the rule in that thing so it will fail and it will redirect to some like human executive but that's where the emergence of machine learning ad advanced machine learning comes into picture and deep learning comes to the rescue right deep learning is just a uh, way how human brains think with the help of those neurons and neural networks so it will definitely like um, how we take a decision the machines will now be able to take a decisions it it is not only about how rule based things work it's now more into how a human brain work or a, how a human brain would reach to a decision so deep learning would help you in that so this was a slight uh, like a slight difference between machine learning and the deep learning algorithms where deep where machine learning algorithms are not that much efficient or not that much effective deep learning comes at the rescue and if we consider where deep learning is used right this may be a question where deep learning is used if you go into any industry maybe the job requirement or the internship requirement like specifically mentions that you have to get good knowledge of cnn and lstms but where are they actually used how deep learning is actually used in the industry uh, this is first of all is computer vision right if you go into the vision stuffs maybe it's a self driving cars if you go into self driving cars it's a camera set up in set up on the top of car and it it is taking all the images from the surrounding and then it's making sense and then it's making the decision whether to move left whether to stop or whether to go on so you have to take a decision with the help of those images and those video video streams coming in so deep learning plays an important role in computer vision and again voice and speech recognition whenever you speak to your google assistant or whenever you speak to your amazon alexa or apple siri so whenever you talk to them you talk in your natural language right you talk to them hey call my mother or what's the number of this what's the temperature outside you just talk in that format and how it actually works is it's convert your voice to text commands and then deep learning comes into picture again right like assume like a google assistant is your friend you ask your friend hey do you know where india like where 
Delhi is, what's the capital of India? You know that. So, like, he comprehends things. He just recalls from his brain and then gives you the answer. Similarly, these Google assistants and these uh, speech recognition based services work into that format. They process your commands and then they give you the response. And natural language processing and generation, like unstructured text, as we discussed, you like your natural language is not that much structured. Maybe you are not like you are not giving a formal instruction. Hey, this is what like you may speak. What's the temperature today? Or uh, like, may I know the temperature today? You may speak anyway, but the machine should learn and machine should give you the response. So that's where deep learning comes into picture drastically. If you go into more and more domain wise things. It's everywhere, like healthcare. If you go into automobiles, it's there. Healthcare, it's there. FinTech, it's there. Deep learning is just like it's covering the market because it's have a lot of potential and it can help you with those complex machine learning algorithms that would have otherwise taken years. But now with the help of deep learning, it's working well. Yeah. So we discussed the difference between AI, ML, DL, a slight difference. Then we got a clear view about machine learning and deep learning, where classical machine learning algorithms fail and how deep learning algorithms come into picture. We discussed that and where deep learning is used. We also had a little bit of discussion on that. Uh, now we would be discussing how and what things actually go into the back end of deep learning. Right? We, we discussed about it, neural networks. We discussed the copy of human intelligence with the help of those neurons. But what actually neuron is? What actually deep learning thing are? Like what is neural network? How a neural network functions? Or what things, what terminologies you have to keep in mind while designing a deep learning algorithm? Or while making that neural network, what things or what terminologies you have to keep in mind while while diving into these deep learning stuffs. We will be discussing those things in this section. Uh, like this is a graphical overview about how deep learning functions. It's like you fed an image, fed an image, whether like a labeled image first, so that the machine learns. Because when you were a child, you were also told this is apple or this is orange, this is dog, this is cat. You were trained, right, by your parents or by your teachers. You were trained at the first go. It was not the case that you saw a cat, it's cat. You never told that. You have been trained earlier. Because your neurons work in that way. Now, whenever you see a cat, your neurons trigger and you reach to this decision. Similarly, we are trying to train a machine with the help of neural networks. This is how. Like we have a labeled photo, like we tell the machine that it's cat and we tell the machine that it's dog. We then just fed it through these neural networks. If you see, there are multiple layers. Here there are four, if you see there are four layers as I'm talking about. These can be extended to any number of layers as per a requirement, how many layers you require or what the requirement of your industry or the organization. It depends upon that. So... First of all, it goes here, it takes some decision, filters the decision to the second layer. It again processes the decision making things and send it to third layer and the things go, keep going on. And then we reach to a final output that cat, it's cat. This is how a neural network functions. Like this is a pictorial view. I would go into the depth of neural networks, how things actually work in neural networks and what's the basic building block of neural networks. So like a little bit of definition of neural networks, what neural networks actually is, as we already discussed, it's a, it's a thing that how biological neurons work. If you think about how your brain takes decision, it's through a decision triggering procedure that's going on in your brain or like how your neurons are taking that decision. It's all into those things. Similarly, you have networks of neurons in your brain. We are trying to use these neural networks in the machine to teach a machine so that a machine can get to a decision or can take a decision that whether it's cat or whether it's dog, it can decide like your brain. So why neural networks? And uh, definitely neural networks learn by example. Like uh, similarly, we humans, right? If we, if we see a cat, even if it's a black cat or a white cat, we are we can div we can tell that it's a cat because we learn by example. We see the features like cat may have whiskers, cat cat is of small size as compared to dog. Like then then we learn by example. We have seen multiple cats. We have seen multiple images of cats and different things. We learn by example, and then we reach to a decision whether it's it was in our rule like it it was fed earlier or not. We learn from the example. 
and now we are coming to output so this is how things are going on and now computers are also trying to do that right you cannot feed all types of cats image into the computer maybe it's not possible maybe a new generation or may maybe a new type of cat is discovered or like that so your machine should be able to discover those things but how it learns again with the help of those networks of neurons and as we tell neural networks the heart of deep learning so if we go into the very basic building block of neural networks right like we will just break this break this thing deep learning elementary part is neural networks right when when you want to do deep learning you have to get a good hold of these neural networks but when you are doing the stuffs or when you are learning with the when these neural networks the most important thing is perceptron it's the elementary entity like it's the smallest smallest element of the neural network which which takes part or which triggers the final decision or which triggers the advanced steps you steps your neural network takes so it's the building block of neural network how neural network functions and how actually neural network reaches or reaches a decision or how neural network helps you to reach a decision it's from the building from the basic blocks of neural network it's perceptron it's the smallest like it's the elementary entity of neural network and this is how a neural network learns so if you go into the structure of perceptron a single perceptron because when you go into neural networks as we already tell network network is a combination of like different different perceptrons or a, like multiple perceptrons or we have a large number of perceptrons in our in our architecture and we use the combination of all these singular perceptrons to reach to decision but if we go into the singular structure of an individual perceptron it's like it takes uh, like input signals maybe it's x1 is a feature of cat let's say it's whiskers its eyes it's the shape of the mouth or shape of the face so these are all the input signals then we have weights weights in the sense weights are like we give certain weightage to certain things right like if if you have five friends and you and you are taking decisions on the basis of the on the inputs from your friends maybe you ask whether whether i should go or whether i should go to a party or not you are telling your five friends hey tell me like should i should i go or not but you will definitely give a weightage to your friend like the best friend whatever like you may have think that if if i on tells or if my best friend tells i will go you give a weightage to like more weightage to me similarly here it is like maybe it's whiskers maybe it's eyes maybe it's the shape of the face but you give more weightage to the whiskers because uh, a cat may have whiskers a human may not have but in case of dogs dogs may also have whiskers then you go to like then you do, then you give more weightage to a structure of face or the shape of the body so do you give different different weights then you sum all those like all the outputs like after you give inputs you get outputs from here right you all the outputs are summed here and we add a bias bias is like how much deviated it's from the actual thing we add a little bias because 100% is not achievable or it's not no, it's not possible right so things are that way and then we have activation function like which activates the decision making procedure we will focus into that activation function and the different types of activation function that we have we would be discussing in the further due of time and after activation function gives an output we get the final final decision and after taking a, these outputs from multiple perceptrons because as we told it's a, a a single perceptron is the entity of neural networks and it's now a network there are like let's say there are 100 of these single perceptrons we have 100 outputs then we sum those things and we deliver an output so this is how a neural network functions at the at the very over like at the very high level overview of this thing first of all neural deep learning how deep learning works neural networks neural networks what's the building block of neural network it's single perceptron like it's a perceptron and things keep stacking up and collection of perceptrons make neural networks collection of neural networks helps you to achieve those things with deep learning this is how things work and if like as we discussed we give an input right 
Like if you see, we have this activation function. Activation function finally decides whether we should do this or whether we should do that. Like activation, we can understand from the word. It's activates the, like it activates the decision making power. Similarly, we give an input, then activation, then the input passes through an activation function. If activation function gives a yes, then it activates the neuron. Otherwise, do not activate the neuron. This is. Like we will go into uh, like into an example of the same. Don't worry. Like we will see. Let's say we have this number five. Okay, and we uh, the activation function is telling that the num if the number is less than ten, then only activate the neuron. You see, the condition is satisfied. It gives a yes, and the neuron is activated. But in the case, it's a certain thing like that. We are trying to give this input of seven, and we are trying to check whether this image has a curve or not it doesn't have a like circular curve or like that no then it doesn't activate the neuron you see the two differences here the activation function gives a go ahead or a green signal it activates the neuron here it doesn't gives it a green signal to go it's it, so it do not activates the neuron if you see here 6 it has a curve has a curve yes activates the neuron similarly in case there was no no signal or a red signal do not activate the neuron this is how a neuron like how a neuron functions and takes its decision with the help of those activation function there are a few activation functions which are highly prevalent in the industry and how things actually work so we will go into those things and what things you should re remember while going for an interview or if you are going for an interview for deep learning internship or which requires you to have skills of deep learning uh, we will definitely discuss few of the terminologies that are highly important to know so first of all it's epoch if you have heard about like like do not think directly into deep learning term uh, like terminology think it as of like english terms only one epoch one epoch is you go one forward one backward let's say they like we have the or like the source point is here we have to reach this place like this is the destination first forward pass and then we came again like in between them we have the training examples then we gave one forward pass then one backward pass so we just traversed all the training examples once in the forward direction then in the reverse direction right so this is one epoch and batch size is number of training examples in forward pass or backward pass right like we uh, like we we discussed if it's the source and it's the destination then how things actually work here right so like bad size bad size is from source to destination how many training examples have you traversed is it is it 100 is it 200 from here to here how many training, training examples were there that's the batch size higher the batch size the more the memory space you will require because if you give more examples from source to destination definitely you will require more memory space to store and to compute so that's the batch size and number of iterations is number of passes right how many how many passes you make how many passes you make using that batch size like batch size we discussed the number of examples we have in one forward or one backward pass to be clear like if we go one passes one forward pass plus one backward pass like this the this is the major important thing that you have to keep in mind one pass is equal to one forward pass plus one backward pass these are not two different passes it's only a single one pass and it's the number of passes you have number of passes you did like we have known the term epoch epoch is one forward pass one backward pass batch size is how many training examples you have in from source to destination and number of iterations is the number of passes that you have that this is the example if you have 100 training examples right like in case this is you have 100 training examples right and your batch size is 500 at a single point of time you are considering 500 Five hundred training examples only, like the number of training examples in one forward or backward pass. How many examples you are looking at at one point of time? That's batch size. So we have total of thousand training examples. We have a batch size of five hundred. So how how much time it will like how many iterations? Five hundred, then five hundred, right? We we have hundred like thousand training examples. The batch size is five hundred. At one point of time, we will get only 
uh, 500 training examples to pick. So it would be two iterations and one complete epoch. Then we have this loss function. Loss function is uh, like it, it would be depicting, uh, let, let's say, uh, if you go into the real world, how we how we decide loss, whether it's it's giving values or it's adding values to a decision or not, we decide from there, right? If if we get money or if we get revenue from it, we say the loss is less. Or if we do not, like if we have targeted, right, if, if we have to get dog image as being classified, right, we want like a machine through which if we push a dog's image, it should give dog, but it's giving cat. So it's a loss, right? Uh, it's it's not giving the thing that we want. So it's a method of evaluation. How will it, how well your algorithm functions, like how well your algorithm runs on your data set. So this is a good example of calculating the loss or calculating a deviation from the original result that we're looking for. Uh, and optimizers, during the training process, we change the parameters of our model. The like parameters in the sense weights. We, we discussed, right, you have five friends and you want to take a decision whether you want to go to a party or not, and you will give the more weightage to your best friend. So in optimizers, we try to optimize the things, right? A loss function decides whether the, like, loss function evaluates our model and through optimizers we try to reduce the loss function right because as as much as the loss function is less that would be great like if your model has a lot of like has a huge loss function value it's now your it signifies that your model is not performing well so optimizers help you to like like if you go into the wordings of that thing optimizes like the best solution should come at come up at the last. So this is optimizers process, how optimizing works or how things actually work in the, like how actually things work in a neural network. So you decide, like if your model is not performing well, your model loss function would be high. And now your end goal would be to reduce that loss function. And how you can reduce that loss function, it would, it would be through optimizers. You optimize the thing, you optimize the performance of your model. Right, and this would be like the loss function is the guide to the terrain. Like if if you are going up to a terrain, and optimizer tells whether you should whether you are moving in wrong direction or right direction, right? Because if you are moving in right direction, then optimizers would not of that much use. But if you are going in wrong direction, it would optimize the process. It will tell you, hey, you are not going in the right direction. Your loss function is very high. Change the weights or change tweak the things in your model and move ahead. Learning rate, learning rate. If you see, like, mm, like we have the weights, right? We we have we give weightage to all the inputs, or we uh, try to learn things from those things, like those weights and other stuffs. So, learning rate is a parameter that determines how much an updating self like step influences the current value of the weights, right? If, if let's say we are taking steps, first of all we are taking five steps, or first of all we are taking ten steps, and then learning rate gives us that like, if we are taking five steps, how it's like how it is uh, affecting our like how is it influencing the weights or like how it's influencing the parameters that we have taken. So learning rate just determines how good your model is performing and how, like how how good your model is learning at the end if your model is learning well then your prediction would be good and if your learning rate is too small let's say then we would consider this model is dumb right when we when we say that your learning rate is very slow like your model is not able to learn something or your model is not able to do great things then if your learning rate is too small then neural network may not learn at all right may not learn at all or at a very slower pace that's not even considerable even a too large too large learning rate you may overshoot right overshoot in the sense like what you can understand is too small is also not good too large is also not good a medium or a in between thing is good because immense high and immense low is definitely not good for life also for these machine learning algorithms or deep learning algorithms too because at the end they're trying to replicate human intelligence or at the end they're trying to do things how a human brain functions or how neurons work this is learning rate and momentum is uh, like it's a value if you see it's a value which takes like it, its magnitude is from zero to one that increases the step of size taken towards the minimum right you you have the concept of local minimum and local minimum is like at the bottom point like if you if you see local minimum is after that there is no any minima you can have that local and global minimum we have these concepts so 
like I am assuming that you have a good a good hold on the mathematical concepts of minima and maxima. Uh, even if you don't have, I will just give you a brief overview. Let's say you have a parabola, like you have a, this kind of parabola, then this is the local minima, right? Because beyond this, you do not have anything to go or beyond this, you do not have any minimum value to be reached. So momentum, it's a value between zero to one and that increases the step size of steps taken like if you if you are trying to reach this minimum right if if this is your parabola you are trying to reach this local minimum and you are trying to take steps 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 and momentum is just it's a value between 0 and 1 that increases the steps like first of all you are taking 0 0.2 steps and now you just keep a momentum between these and increase the steps to 0 0.4 so that you can just try to jump towards that local minima. So this is the momentum's concept. And a right value of momentum can be cross-valid. Like you may heard, you might have heard about this concept of K cross validation or like cross-validation technologies or cross-validation algorithms that we have. So we can get a good idea about what the momentum value should be. Because optimal value of momentum is not is not that much easy to be def defined or is not that much easy to be determined at the first go. So cross validation is definitely a good way or hit and trial is like hit and how many times you will do the hit and trial. It's a trivial process. So look, cross validation can definitely help you in this way. Like flatten, flatten is right two dimensional arrays into a single uh, into a single long continuous vector. It would be right n dimensional array into a single uh, like you're reducing the dimensions to a single long you can understand that this is a 2d matrix like four cross four and you are just trying to make it a singular line like it, you're trying to flatten that in terms of a singular singular array right so this is things and this this thing actually helps you when you deal with computer vision like i have worked with computer vision stuff so flattening helps you in computer vision stuffs and can give you a good accuracy and help you to do better models uh, a batch normalization is we discuss batches epochs pass forward pass and backward pass so a batch normalization would be a technique of improving the performance right uh, like how you normalize the things normalization in the means you are trying to make the things better so that the output of the model or uh, whatever the model is predicting is better and is of benefit for you uh, like at the end your model should uh, predict well so batch normalization is a technique of improving the performance and stability of artificial neural networks and it it is a technique to provide any any layer in a neural network with inputs that are zero mean or unit variance uh, like do, if you try to go into the depth of mathematics at the first go i would i would just definitely refer like i would just definitely suggest you to complete your mathematical things first because that's why most of the students they directly jump into these deep learning stuffs without without a good hold on mathematical concepts like you might have heard about the things that you might have you should have a good hold on the mathematical concepts like we discuss the local minima or like there are certain concepts the local minima and like you have to get a good hold about these calculus and here we discussed about two dimensional arrays if you talk about linear algebra dimensional arrays are, are like determinants and matrix are definitely a good thing to learn from there. So I would request everyone to just like polish their mathematical skills. I'm like, do not become a mathematician. I would not speak that become a mathematician that you are polishing so much that you are not a deep learning engineer anymore. You are becoming a mathematician. I would not do, I would not suggest you that just a brief overview about the concepts and then you can start with these things because then you can relate better. Right. And decays, if you go into how, like, uh, like that causes the weights to exponentially decay to zero. Like we, we give weights to one. First of all, we are giving very much weightage to a single person. We do not know. But we are seeing that, that after giving that much of weight to a certain input, the things are not working well. So we, we just tweak the weights and we try to re reduce the weights from like one one is not working well, let's make it to 0 0.8 or we are trying to make it to 0 0.3. We see that at 0 0.3, the model is working well. This is how the things of DK comes into picture. We just update the weights and because it's all about tweaking the weights. Uh, like if you tweak the weights properly, your model will definitely perform well and you can uh, reach to a better decision making thing or reach to a better procedure or a better decision, right? 
dense layer is uh, like the you might have heard about these things like densely connected densely connected in the sense we discussed four layers at the starting of the neural networks we discussed that cat and dog we have four layers and each layer is giving some output which is an input for the layer after that so densely populated layers or densely connected layers is we have variety of layers or we have like dense dense means things are very close or things are very com like complicated like are very compressed or like are like in a, in a short in a shorter amount of space you have lot of things so dense is like hell lot of number of layers into that things and you are trying to make a neural network with those things so dense layer is that and dropout dropout refers to not considering neurons right because maybe it's possible that you are doing forward pass and backward pass as we discussed in epoch and the passes that we discussed a few minutes ago so dropout means that you are not giving preference to the neurons or certain neurons while you are doing that forward or backward pass so dropout means not considering dropout in the sense you are not just uh, viewing it like you are just considering that that uh, these neurons are not in our model and these things are not of our concern so you can just think about that and why dropout is done maybe it's done to prevent overfitting overfitting in the sense that your model is overfit or underfit right underfit is it it, it cannot even uh, like see or it cannot even understand the basic things or overfitting is like it's having a lot of biasness or it's it's like fitting like ju just it's key. you your model is imposing something specifically or imposing something strongly on your network or strongly on your prediction so we are trying to reduce or trying to prevent overfitting with this dropout concept dropout means you are just not considering a certain number of neurons while you are doing this forward and backward passes and then we have this for hyperparameter tuning hyperparameter tuning in the sense like we have this hyperparameters like common hyperparameters if you say learning rate we discussed if we go into this learning rate we discussed here too small too large is bad we discussed learning rate and momentum momentum is the num like how the steps you take to reach a global minima so we have these parameters learning rate momentum uh, you see learning rate is alpha momentum is beta adams hyperparameter so these are different different parameters number of hidden layers number of hidden layers comes into picture when you have this densely populated like dense densely connected layer because once you have dense layers there may be multiple layers but how many layers so this is also a parameter number of hidden layers you have learning rate you have momentum you have the learning rate dk like we discussed dk an additional term in the weight update like how you update your weights so we have these parameters and we tune these parameters right learning rate momentum number of hidden layers mini batch batch size we discussed learning dk rate so we have these these parameters so it's it's more into if your learning rate like why we have kept learning rate at the top because it's one of the most significant feature that you have to consider while doing some like while doing the analysis or while playing with deep learning stuff so learning rate is a very important feature that i have seen myself in a few of my projects that i've did so like i have also mentioned it learning rate usually proves to be the most important among the above like this is the rate, this is the significance you may see that i have arranged these uh, seven seven features but these are like this is one of the most important then this is the second most like as per my experience with working projects like this this was something and hyper hyperparameter tuning is more into a experimental thing it's not that there is something scientific that you have to do that only you have to do this only it's more about like a data scientist donning a scientist job like scientist job is to experiment and like get, like be happy with the experiments that he's doing and getting something new out of those experiments so hyperparameter tuning is more into that you do a lot of a lot of experimentations and then you reach to a final decision that may work or may not work if it's working then congratulations if it's not working you have to tune these parameters like tune these parameters and when you have to tune these parameters again you have to get a good hold on what these things actually mean like what's learning rate what's momentum what are the number of hidden layers what are these actually like dk what is actually dk means so these questions also form a basic basis for your interview if you go into an interview 
maybe they can give you a use case or maybe they can give you a condition where they will give you certain things that the model is not performing well we have these these parameters like the decay rate is this the learning rate is this uh, like momentum is this and uh, they they give you certain parameters now they would tell you help us to reach out a pull, like reach out to a decision which parameter should we tweak like they would not ask you how much should we tweak they would definitely tell you ask you um, what what do you think which parameter should we tweak at the first go so you you have to get a good hold on these concepts and again i am telling if you are looking forward to deep learning and other stuff so your mathematical concepts should be at least at least good so that you understand what things are actually like how things are actually working like the biggest example was that global minima or local minima you 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 will definitely hear those things in your mathematics terms and if you see the flattening like if you go into flattening flattening is two dimensional arrays if you do not know how arrays work or how vectors work so it will be like like you will definitely be like and you will definitely get confused at the end so it's better that you get a good hold in mathematics first and then you start with those terminologies and start with those things so that you have a perfect combination of things the mathematical concepts as well these like these small small concepts that have to keep it in mind uh, while while doing the deep learning and other stuff as we discussed activation function like i will just go back to the slide where activation functions were playing a role right input activation function if it's it gives a green signal it activates the neuron if it doesn't gives the green signal it doesn't activates the neuron so this is how activation function actually works now we would be discussing what activation functions like what are the types of activation function maybe you will get this question in your interview and i will i will just dive into two of them which are more like which are most common or more like which are highly popular in the industry for deep learning we will go into those things and how things actually work in those activation functions we will understand those concepts but yeah these are some of the like these are six or like there are many more i would not speak that there are not like there are no no other activation function other than this six there are but these are very important and these are highly used in industry and you can like you can get a good hold on these cons like on these activation functions because you may have to use these things in your project or you have to you may have to use these things in your like industry use case so these the first is sigmoid we would be discussing about this sigmoid the tanh like the, then the relu leaky relu max out elu okay so we would just go into like these are the graphs how things work and these are the formulas and if you see Mm, relu how things work max zero or x like the x is the input you see the graph if if it, x is negative it will give zero right because maximum of zero and minus let's say x is minus five so out of that zero is maximum so it will give zero otherwise uh, once it crosses zero it will be definitely according to the x if it's one two three four five it will accordingly give the answer according to that so. this is like um, we would be as we as, as told we would be discussing about two common very common activation functions activation functions if we just consider very layman very layman definition then it would be right it activates or it takes a major role in deciding right x is x is the output i say x is the output of a previous layer maybe you get a output final output as x and then this activation function decides whether to activate the neuron or do, you do not have to activate the neuron so it takes a decision and the final decision is taken so how it works x is something that is coming from the previous previous layer that's working so sigmoid function converts the weighted sum like if you see the sum cannot be more than 1 right because one even if the if the denominator gets bigger it will definitely become less than 1 right if if this term becomes zero then only fx would be one otherwise if this term denominator becomes larger and larger this term would definitely like gradually decrease so this is the graph it's a average weighted sum whose value lies between zero and one definitely because it cannot be less than zero because this is this cannot be a negative number and one it cannot cross one because you like even if you go into the mathematical things it cannot cross one and relu rectified like 
it's also a common question right what's the full form of relu or leaky relu so you may have to explain those things and most of the time sigmoid and relu do a good good amount of job and you can crack your interviews with the help of these smaller smaller concepts so relu as we discussed it's about max maximum function zero zero and x x is something that's coming from the previous layer so we can move ahead with this uh, like then we have this three things deep neural networks convolutional neural networks recurrent neural networks so like as we discussed about the neuron first of all we discussed about deep learning and uh, then we discussed about the uh, like deep learning's basic stuff neural networks then how neural network functions what's the elementary thing of neural network is the perceptron we discussed about that then we discussed how like what are the key components or what are the key things that you should keep in mind and the parameters that you should keep in mind whether it be its parameters like uh, dk rate learning rate momentum or the number of hidden layers that you have so we discuss about these things activation function as we saw in the image earlier activation function has the sole responsibility or i would not say sole responsibility it at least plays a major role in deciding whether the neuron should be activated or the neuron should not be activated so it plays a major role there uh deep learning like then we have these three different types of neural networks that are highly prevalent in industry like first of all is deep neural networks why it's used it's for classification and forecasting models like if you classify let's say we have that iris data set and we have three types of flowers there virginica setosa and they different like we have this types of flowers and we want to classify then we can use deep learning deep neural networks if you want to do feature extraction right we want to extract the features and classify the images let's say we have 100 images combining dogs and cats we have both like you see like even if you go into traffic signal detection right maybe you are thinking of a project and traffic sign detection is also a good project so you are just uh, classifying those images whether it's a stop it sign or whether it's a go ahead sign so convolution neural networks can help you in classification of images and feature extraction extracting the features and if you go into right time series data which are like output output of certain things gets into input and Thing, things work like that, so it's a complex thing. You see that there are circular, like circle circles going on, and the output input just plays a major important role. So recurrent means one of one after another, one after another. So it's it's a recurrent process. Convolution we discussed, deep deep neural networks we discussed. So these are independently very big topics, and you can first of all you can start with this deep neural networks. Then as you go ahead, play with image data sets. so you can start with this convolutional neural networks and then if you go to time series or lstms if you if you have heard about the concepts of lstms and big uh, other big terminology so neural recurrent neural networks also play a important role the, these were some of the common terminologies common deep learning neural networks that we use along with the activation functions and a few activation functions that we discussed but after all how will we achieve this right you have a good knowledge of the concepts you have a good knowledge of the mathematical things that go in the back end or th- how things actually work in neural network you have a good idea about that but how will you use the power of those knowledge into detecting something or classifying something so you have to code it because machines do not understand your human language they have to be tuned or they have to be co- like given given instructions in the form of zero ones like how but you cannot do everything from your like from scratch even if you start doing maybe it will take a larger amount of time but we will definitely look for some better alternatives right which alternatives can help us to achieve our goal at the earliest so these are some of the common deep learning libraries first is theano tensorflow keras pytorch so if you if you have a good hold on any like tensorflow keras like these these three i personally prefer because i ha- i work a lot on these three libraries and if you have a good idea about these things along with a good concept knowledge right good concept knowledge that we discuss learning rates and how deep learning sorry how neural networks actually work then you can definitely use the power of these these libraries theano tensorflow keras pytorch there are many more like mxnet so we we have a uh, different like uh, many many more cafe like you see here so there are different 
many many libraries that you can explore but as of me tensorflow is very good for a beginner point of view like if you are starting with deep learning i would definitely suggest you to start with tensorflow then you can start then you can just go into keras and pytorch and things keep going on that way so yeah and if if we discuss like we understood how things work why why ai ml like what's the slightest difference ai ai is the biggest circle and then machine learning is a way to achieve ai and deep learning is just a technique to help you help you with machine learning like more like we dis- we discuss the difference between classical machine learning algorithms and the deep learning algorithms that we have like rule based in case of rule based programs classical machine learning algorithms work very very well but when it comes to some complex or some advanced things maybe your machine learning algorithms won't work so that's where deep learning comes into picture and helps you to achieve machine learning like helps you to achieve those complex machine learning things so this this was a brief overview about ai ml deep learning then we saw a difference a slight difference between machine learning and deep learning and what things actually go into the back end of deep learning like how things work in deep learning it boils down to neural networks when we discuss about neural networks it all boils down to the neurons neurons and perceptrons then we discuss about perceptrons how perceptron works weights then we discuss about the terminologies that we have smaller smaller terminologies that you have to get a brief idea about these things priorly right because if you have a good idea about these no these terms and along with the mathematical things or how things actually work these things will definitely help you and then we discussed about the activation functions and some of the common deep learning libraries in the market uh, my suggestion would be start with tensorflow then go to keras pytorch then the things keep going on and we discuss about three different types like neural networks deep neural networks convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural networks with along after this we discuss how things actually work if we go into feature extraction or classification of images then convolutional neural networks work best the recurrent neural networks if you go into time series or forecasting things like that definitely this will help that recurrent neural networks will help and um, things like going on but why is ai ml dl is growing so like growing so much maybe like we definitely know the amount of generation of data is definitely high the date the rate at which data is being generated is definitely very very high so we have data and we have the processing powers too right first of all it's like the sharp decrease in cost associated with data storage right we have a lot of data but you see the storage cost like how like earlier we used to have some hard disk or earlier we used to have some servers specifically on our premises to store the data but now with the advent of this cloud computing things we have uh, like strongly decreased the cost associated with data storage how we store the data and processing definitely you have the availability of good processors gpus cpus tpus even if you work with tensorflow and different stuff you will go into tpus and different stuff and advent of mobile economy yeah mobile apps definitely because if these things would not have been there data would not have been there and if you do not have the data your model won't work or pick like that and the abundance of open source tools let's say you have the data you have the processing you have the data storage facilities but if you do not have that community or if you do not have that libraries like tensorflow or theano or keras out there so it would be a tedious job right you have to do everything like parallel processing you have to write codes for parallel processing and then you have to do every like you have to build the graphs or things like that so it things would become more complex right because deep learning is itself a com- like a bit complex topic and if you go into doing everything from scratch like it would be i would not say that it would be a mess but it would definitely take more amount of time and may like you may end being confused where should i go or what should i do so and apart from this development of a wealth of innovative ml and dl algos thanks to the teams at like big big organizations like they have research labs like google brain they work continuously in these machine learning and deep learning algorithms facebook ai labs so definitely they are doing work we have this open community and open source things going on with data storage and processing costs coming down with the availability of these gpus cpus tpus this this is the reason why ai ml deep learning is 
increasing day by day but if you see the ad like the growth of deep learning is more uh, like if if you compare the things with machine learning and deep learning most of the companies prefer to use deep learning why this is one of the graphs right like if you have the same amount of data th this is the data that we have and then this is the performance right the performance of a model or the performance of prediction let's say we are trying to predict whether it's a dog or cat so that's a performance right if if your model is performing well this performance meter goes up with same amount of data machine learning algorithms performance tend like i i would not speak that they are not good but you can see the difference between deep learning and machine learning, other machine learning algorithms with same amount of data your deep learning algorithms like they they go into like they see the things like neural like how your brain works like they see the things in terms of neurons they try to new network with each other they try to network with the help of neurons and reach a decision but in case of machine learning algorithms it's maybe rule based or something like that so you you are not utilizing the best of those data you are not just like maybe it's possible that you are using a linear approach to do machine learning but in terms of deep learning when it comes to deep learning you see a hell lot of combinations hell lot of connections going on and when you see combinations and connections coming in definitely you will get to a better result or get a better output uh, but there are multiple challenges which the industry is currently facing like there are mul like very big big challenges which even one of the biggest or some of the biggest organizations in the world are facing like these are very common like first of all data dependency like if you want to create deep learning models it should be right you you must have a good quality data you your data should be good enough so that the model can be trained on that and in world the data in real world the data is really messy and there is like there there is a dearth of this quality training data like you do not have that much quality in the training data that you are using so deep learning stuffs face a major challenge due to that quality of data that we have a lack of generalization right uh, uh, if, like if you if i talk to you like if i make you learn how to play starcraft right if if i make you to play starcraft then you would understand yeah starcraft works like this i have to operate the game like this then you can also play a similar game like warcraft but when it comes to deep learning algorithms you train a model to play starcraft it 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 lacks the capability to generalize things like it cannot generalize the things it's very specific that if it's taught or if it's trained to do to play with starcraft game then it will definitely work best with that if even if you give a similar type of generalized thing like a warcraft which sometime which is somehow related to starcraft only it will fail so lack of generalization is a major challenge again for deep learning apart from that explainability like neural networks like you code a neural network you train a neural network you are doing awesome stuffs with neural networks but there are high chances that you may not be able to explain how neural network functions at a later stage of time like one of the biggest example is you might have heard that facebook uh, like made like uh, facebook's there were two robots in facebook and they started conversing in their own language at some point of time so uh, like even the facebook researchers were not able to figure it out what they are talking about and how things they are and how they are learning the things because you cannot explain like excla explainable ai is one of the major booming topic that's rising in the industry so neural networks are right extremely complicated ways and even if you have coded that thing like i would not speak that uh, like your local projects or the your self projects would face this problem but when you go to industry level things definitely it would be like like a bigger problem when your scale is so big and your model is trained with lot of data and you have coded initially but now as deep learning like as a human brain learns learns you do not have the capacity to stop right things can go anyway and neural networks there are high chances that neural networks work well i am not speaking that neural networks will not perform well maybe they will perform well but you may not have the explanation or you trained the model in certain way after 2 3 months the model learned something and they are conversing in uh, like another another level of words or like another level of things you are not even trying to like even able to understand what they are actually speaking about so explain explainability is a major issue 
and algorithmic bias again we have heard about these things like you might have, you might have heard that google's photo or like uh, that photo tagging photo tagging platforms had this problem like facial recognition algorithm mostly work with white people it doesn't work like it doesn't work accurately with no like non white people so it's like your training data was completely full of uh, like white people or like majority of the training data was white people so it's now algorithmically biased right your algorithm that you have designed is correct, completely like i would not say completely it's somehow biased towards the data that it doesn't have that much in its original data set right if your original data set had more white people it would it would give a it, it would it would give a prediction more frequently but if you say about like non white people be just because it doesn't have that data in that data set in the original data set on which the model was trained it may not perform well so its algorithmic bias is again a social major social issue like explainability and algorithmic bias are some of the major concerns from society point of view for deep learning industry and these are like data dependency and lack of generalization are definitely the technical like technical dependencies of deep learning these are major challenges challenges and we have discussed all the things most of our most of us right deep learning ai ml deep learning the differences how deep learning works or like the basic building block of deep learning neural networks the basic building block of neural networks perceptron activation function the topic like the small small terminologies then we discussed why the growth and some common deep learning libraries and some of the major challenges that industry faces just because of these deep learning and other other stuffs right and now it's more it's time into resources where you can learn deep learning and with this we would be concluding the session right so like but before all those things i would just appreciate if you if you have a good good knowledge of mathematics right you might have seen that like a good amount of concepts of mathematics is being used 2d arrays or gradient descent or like like local minima minima maxima descent like these are all concepts of calculus linear algebra probability statistics if you go into the picture of these things so definitely resources i will put and links i will definitely give you but mathematics plays an important role not only mathematics how you implement those mathematical concepts with the help of python r whichever you use so i i personally prefer python and uh, like i try to implement those mathematical concepts the major important things that i learn about is calculus linear algebra probability statistics those are important topics and like i would not speak that you have to learn the like learn the whole things that you're learning maybe it's not at that level applied mathematics that you're learning in college no not at that level but it is a brief overview about things how actually things work so it's required mathematics good at like get a good hold on those things and these are the few things like don't worry this slides will be shared i will tell the organizer to share the slides with you no worries and first of all deeplearning.ai this is a very like they have specialization on deep learning you can definitely go there and uh, understand the concepts and start with the things from there and if you are a fan of jeremy hawards like fast fast.ai then deep learning course on this website is also also good and if you if you want to like if you might have heard about andrew ng i i hope that you have heard about andrew ng so there is a deep learning.ai course or deep learning course by andrew ng so this person like uh, it's a it's a slide share slide share like you you can get this uh, like animated format of all the concepts of deep learning and it may like why i prefer this format is right uh, because when things are all like terminal when you are working on terminal things it's all about black and white and if even if you are working with jupyter notebook it's all about those terminals and other stuff so maybe your eye is like eye is pain from learning something new or something like that so this this resource will definitely help you to keep you up and keep you interested this is the slide share link you can go there and you have the complete notes of the deep learning course by andrew ng and if you want to get a summary like what deep learning dot like you did this course and want to get a summary what things will be covered and what you can definitely learn from these from this course you can go to this website and can get that detailings and definitely like i would not speak deep learning is very very easy 
but i would not also speak that it's very very tough it's it's good to go if you if your concepts are well versed like if you're well versed with your concepts if your basics are awesome then definitely you should go for it and things will definitely work for it work for you if you have good concepts and start doing projects after your concepts are made not wait that all my concepts will be complete then i then only i will do projects or then only i will do things no go for it good luck and if you have any questions i can answer them now or like if if you want to connect with me after this session you can definitely email me or i ha- i have my linkedin and github things and talks like if if you if you want to get the slides the organizer will definitely send you the link i will tell them to do that or apart from this you can go to my website ionra.ml in that talk section there is a tab for talks you can get all the slides of like even this slide from there also yeah so if anyone have any questions i can answer them now yeah 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 mm-hmm. uh huh uh huh yeah how ai ml data science like like it's all about a combination of things data science is more into how you play with data right because when you go into data science these are not completely different like uh like as we saw ai ml dl we like otherwise someone would have asked dl how dl helps ml or how ml helps ai so these are all interrelated things and like data science when you go into data science data science itself a domain and you use the terminologies or concepts of deep learning let's say you use lstms and you have the concepts of lstms or neural networks you can use those concepts in doing a data science project or data science use case like in, to solve that Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like uh you it all depends on your data set like the original data set that you have and mostly as you work upon as you work on different different projects right a, like at the first go you may speak randomly I on take 5 or i on take your this hyperparameters or take take this dk rate or take this learning rate as 5 but it won't make sense right because you have not worked or you have not seen how things actually work but after you see uh, like after you do a lot of projects or after you get your hands dirty with projects in deep learning then you will definitely get an uh, like a rough overview about the, how things work and then cross validation and hit and trial definitely works Mm-hmm. uh like like this all this all depends uh like if, if i if i tell my if i tell my like numbers of project that i had when i cracked my first internship it's like you are going for an internship not for a job first of all understand that like internships when you go for an internship you are still in learning phase like even if you going to job you are into learning phase but it should not be that if i give five projects if your five projects are very basic ones then of no use right very basic ones won't work even if you have 10 but let's say you have two projects which are highly awesome right even even if you in your resume you have two projects as compared to five basic projects right five basic projects won't do that much good or like that much good as compared to two very good projects and do understand that whenever you do projects try to understand all the concepts because when you put a resume like when you put a project in your resume there are high chances that your recruiter may ask you hey you do you mentioned this project in your resume can you tell me what things you use or maybe if if he's a technical recruiter he will definitely ask you you told me about this how do you approach this how do you work with this how do you work with cnns tell me about that so whenever you do projects do not run behind quantity right it's it's not a bhagavad gita or mahabharat that you have to fill it it's just a single page thing and quality always rocks even if you have two projects go for it but make sure that those projects are very very good or like are, are not the basic ones because basic ones industry is now like becoming saturated of those things 
to start with to start with even two two medium level or intermediate level projects would definitely do the work and how you present yourself because even if you have good good projects but if you cannot explain your project if you cannot answer the questions what the recruiters asks you right you have uh, let's say you have mentioned 10 projects of yours but a recruiter asks you some question and you are not able to answer all those 10 projects become zero right so you should be able to understand like make make people understand what you did and you should know the concepts whatever you write in resume it should be crystal clear and you should have everything on your tips mm -hmm. yeah definitely yeah definitely definitely because you have to answer that because if, like even if you put projects in your inter like in your resume what's the end goal to crack an interview right but if you if you put all the projects but the recruiter asks you something and you are not able to answer that gives a very bad impression right it the recruiter may give may get a image of you that you are someone who is boasting who doesn't know a lot but he is trying to put everything in the resume so do not do that mhm mm Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, it's it's good to be a T-shaped professional. Like I will I will just uh, brief you about what's T-shaped professional. If you see the shape of T, the the like the T's what's say the the stick below like the upper bar and the lower bar that I talk about, right? If if you see T has a depth, like a depth of certain thing. Let's say you are a good, you are very good at data science. So your depth should be in data science, but you can simultaneously understand cloud computing DevOps that are the upper base. So just understand it's as a T where T where the depth thing is your strength point. Maybe it's data science and DevOps cloud computing are the peripherals. And you should definitely have a uh, like a skill which you should be known for in the industry. It should not be that hey I want a DevOps guy. Then the your then your team function. Then your team thinks, "Oh my God, should I call Ayon? Because he knows both. Like knowing both is not good. Like I, I would not say that knowing both things are bad. But you should be known for your strengths. If De De if DevOps is attracting you, if DevOps is interesting to you, definitely go for it. Because every domain has its potential. Every domain has market demand. But the most important thing is you should be skilled. And I definitely think that if you are starting your career, you should pick one topic at a time." Mm -hmm. uh, projects, yeah. So project references. What you can do is like if you complete, if you do this course, deep learning dot AI or this specialization one. If you go into the deep, like the deep learning course by Andrew Ng, there is an end course, right? so they they can go they can move over to that and if you if they want to do projects definitely they can start with those uh, small image classification projects then they can start with those uh, right like which involve time series let's say forecasting projects or time series lstms rnns so focus on that whenever you do projects it should not be that i am doing a titanic project it should be like what i am doing in that i am doing linear regression that's the project right it it you, the you should not give name to projects right ki i am doing a dog versus cat classifier that's not a project what the project actually means is what you are learning from it image classification that's a project like major things pick up the domains right say fintech let's say you are working in fintech fintech so for go go to google and search about deep learning in fintech so you will definitely get some ideas try to implement those things and definitely they will be your projects Mm -hmm. uh some projects uh if, if you have not started uh like if you have not started yet i would suggest you to go with these uh, image classification first do like mnist one if if you are just starting or if you have done with these things i would just uh, refer you i would just prefer you to go for lstms in chatbots right if you go into chatbots there is a thing of rnns lstms and ensembles you can definitely go there uh so yeah. 
yeah i will i will add the add few resources and uh, like in case you want like i think that these deep learning dot ai and if you go into this deep learning course by andrew ng they will definitely cover the mathematics but yes still if you if you have anything right if you want to reach out to me like if you want to get some additional resources you can reach out to me i can definitely help you with that too Mm-hmm. <laughs> they want to listen me again and again <laughs> so thanks for the love <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I will just because it's a Google Slides. I, what I will do is I will just add another slide with a few more resources which the people can uh, like access. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, and thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, like I will, I will definitely be there to support you and all the initiatives. And if still anyone have any doubts or queries, they can reach out to me definitely. And Rakesh, you are doing good work. congratulations to the entire team of tech table convey my best wishes to them and keep growing and if i can be of any help do let me know i will be definitely with you uh huh yeah yeah they can also use that yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> sure okay thank you